Miss Teresa from South Hill Bible Church here to for another children's Bible lesson today. I hope you've had a good week and I hope you're out there going for walks and enjoying the sunshine when we have it and uh, enjoying the rain when we have it as well. All right, well, I'm going to get started and uh, before I do, I want to just uh, show you who we've got over here. Some of the prayer bears that we've used before over here in the corner. And they're going to be part of our Bible class today. That's right. Okay, well, let's get started. Ah, so good to see you. I can't wait till we're back in the church, but uh, I really love the fact that you're watching these uh, videos that we've made for the Bible class. Yeah. Well, let's get started. And you know what we start with? We start with our prayer. And there are four kinds of prayers in case you forgot. There are I love you prayers or prayers of adoration. I'm sorry prayers or prayers of confession. I'm thankful prayers or prayers of thanksgiving. And please prayers, prayers of supplication. I think that today we're going to do I love you prayers. Yeah. Well, does anybody have a stuffed animal with them today? I've got a different prayer bear today, and he's going to be my prayer bear today. All right, so if you have a favorite stuffed animal, it doesn't have to be a bear, then grab that, and if not, then just put your hands in your lap and close your eyes, and we'll get started. Okay. Dear God, I love you so much, and I am so happy that you sent Jesus so that all of us could be saved by and through him. I love my parents. I love my family. I love the time that I'm able to spend with them right now. And I love South Hill Bible Church so much because it's a great church with great people in it and great friends. And I love the fact that we will get to go back to the church as soon as we can. But, and I also love the fact that we can share together in this way and that you have given us this opportunity to be together. Thank you, God, and uh, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm going to put my bear down for a minute now. And uh, we're going to start with our new lesson today. First we'll do our review, and let's see if anyone remembers what we did, talked about last time. Does anybody remember? Well, let's, let's see. Last week, we talked some more about David. When he became king, he, David, made Jerusalem his capital city. And what did David want to bring to Jerusalem? Do you remember? That's right, the Ark of the Covenant. Here it is, right here. Can you see that? Yeah, this is, look, is very similar to what he had. Mm -hmm. It's not the actual Ark of the Covenant, of course, but it is really cool to look at. So I'm going to leave that there for you. What terrible thing happened the first time David and his people tried to move the Ark? on a cart. Do you remember? That's right. A man touched the ark and he died. But the second time, David follows God's instructions exactly to the T. And he brought the ark safely to Jerusalem. Then David decided he wanted to build a beautiful temple and that for the ark of God. And what did God say about that? Do you remember what God said about that? Well, he t said David would not build it. One of his sons would. And it, God also gave David a special promise that Jesus would come and from his family and be king of kings forever. That is a long time, isn't it? Yes. Things seem to be going well for David. And he was the king of Israel, all of Israel. He built a palace and his family grew. David loved and worshiped God, but even men like David can fall into sin. Oh no. 
In today's lessons, we'll see how David sinned and made the mistake of trying to cover it up. All right, so I'm going to put the ark over here for a minute. So, it all started, here's the, here we go. It all started in the springtime, a time when kings want to, went to war and fought battles. But David, army went to fight the enemies of Israel. David didn't go. He wasn't sick. So he should have been leading his army, but he chose to stay home instead. Uh-oh. It can lead to trouble when we choose not to do what we should do. While David was at home, he saw a beautiful woman named Bathsheba. She was married to one of Dave's fighting men named Uriah. David decided he wanted Bathsheba for his own wife. God knew this was against God's laws, but he didn't care. Sin had gripped his heart, and all he could think about was Bathsheba. David tried to cover up his son, but nothing was working. Finally, David came up with a terrible plan to get rid of Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. When David, David sent a letter to his commander, Joab, who was out fighting. In the letter, he told Joab, to put Uriah up front, the worst part of the bottle, so he would be killed by the enemy. Joab obeyed David's command, and Uriah was killed. When David heard that Uriah died in battle, he brought Bathsheba into the palace to become his wife. But David's sin was great. He, sold, he stole a man's wife and killed the man. This was very bad. Let's do an experiment to help us understand what happened to David. Okay, here I've got a glass of water. And you can see that the glass of water is very clear. It's clear water, isn't it? Well, I've also got here some food dye, all right? This glass is like David, this clear glass. It will say the water is his heart, the part of his we should think about when we should or shouldn't do something. David first sinned when he wanted Bathsheba as his wife, even though he knew she was already unmarried. So here was his clean heart, and now we're going to see what happens. Hmm. Oh, it's looking like it's looking a little different in that water, isn't it? This is called coveting when we want something very badly that belongs to someone else. And David, and that is sin. Then David kept trying to cover up his sin. Do you see it's getting darker and darker? And he had Uriah killed by the enemy. Ooh, how does David's heart look now? Does it look dirty or clean? Well, I think it looks pretty dirty. That doesn't look clear to me, does it to you? This is pretty dirty. David chose to ignore his sin, and he tried to cover it up by killing Uriah. All right, so he tried to cover this up. I'm just going to put a towel over it. He tried to cover it up, didn't he? Yeah. He try chose to ignore his sin, and he tried to cover it up again by killing Uriah. Now Bathsheba was David's wife, and she was expecting a baby. David got what he wanted and thought he could pretend nothing had happened. Do you think that will work for David to pretend his sin is hidden? Do you think he can hide like this glass is hiding under the towel? Oh, I don't think so either. Let's find out if that worked. David's disobedience did not please God at all, so God sent Nathan the prophet to speak to David. Okay, so if you've got your Bible handy, let's turn to 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Okay, I'll give you a chance to find that. So 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Okay, I'm going to read what Nathan told David. All right, so... The Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb he had bought. 
He raised it and it grew up with him and his children. It shared his food. It shared his drink from his cup and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. Okay, so what did the rich man have? You see what the rich man had here? What did he have? Yes, he had many flocks and sheep and herds. What did the poor man have? Nothing but one little ewe lamb. That's right, nothing but one little ewe lamb. So how did the poor man feel about his one lamb? Well, he treated it like a daughter, didn't he? Yes, it was like a daughter to him, one of his family. Who came to visit the rich man? It was a traveler, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, a hungry traveler came to stay with the rich man. When the rich man wanted to feed the traveler, he didn't want to kill any of his own lambs for their dinner. So what did the rich man do? He took the poor man's one ewe lamb and he killed it, didn't he? Well, what? The rich man who had lots of lambs? He didn't want to use his own, so he killed the poor man's one lamb and served it for dinner? That's terrible! What do you think King David thought when he heard this? What do you think King David thought when he heard this story? Let's find out in the next verse. So let's turn to 2 Samuel 12, verse 5. David burned with anger against the man and said mm -hmm. to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. Hmm. So how did David feel? He was very angry, wasn't he? What punishment did King David say the rich man deserved? That's right, death. He was to die for what he had done. David got very angry when he heard about this. He said the rich man deserved to die. Then Nathan told David, you are the man. What did Nathan mean? Did David kill someone's lamb? No, he didn't kill anyone's lamb. Nathan told a story called a parable to help David understand his own sin. His, he said David was the rich man. What do you think the poor man did in the story? Who do you think he was in the story? That's right, Uriah. He had, because David had Uriah killed so that he could have Bathsheba, Uriah's wife, for his own. David could not hide his sin. God knew all about it. God always knows our hearts and sees everything we do. God knew exactly what David did. When Nathan told David this story, it was like God removed the towel from the glass so David could see what was in his own heart. And it was pretty dark, wasn't it? Yeah, I'll put it up here so you can see it a little bit better. So what do you think David should do now? Hmm, David asked God to cleanse him from his sin and forgive him, and God did. Oh my, let's see how that would look. Let's see what happens here. Okay, we're just going to let that sit there. Keep your eye on the order. Okay, but even so, even though God forgave him, David still had to be punished so he would learn not to sin. Nathan said David would have trouble in his family and his baby with Bathsheba would die. This was very sad news, but David understood that there would be consequences for what he had done. Okay, it looks like I'm going to need to add a little bit something more to this. So, William's going to hand me this. What I've got here i pour a little bit more of this in and what we can see what happens when we add more of this. This keeps getting lighter and lighter, doesn't it? 
Uh-huh. All right. Look at the water. What's happening to it? Well, it looks like it's getting clearer and clearer, doesn't it? Yeah. So eventually this water will go back to being completely clear, but it's going to take a little bit longer and a little bit more of cleansing. And that's exactly what David needed. So what happened to David's sin? It disappeared, yes, and it's slowly disappearing from this glass. That's what God does for us and for you too, because Jesus died on the cross and rose again, we can be cleansed of our sin and forgiven, right? like this. So do you, did you see all of this? This was the rich man story that was being told as a parable and David asked God to forgive him and that's what God did. Yes. All right. Well, thank you for joining with the Bible story today and the Bible class, but we're not done yet. No, it's time for William and I to uh, come up and see you and let's get started. All right. So William's here to join me, and we are going to start with our song. And does everyone remember our song? That's right. It's Cast Your Burden. So let's start with that. All right. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Higher, 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 lift up Jesus higher. Higher, 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 lift up Jesus higher. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Lower, 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 lower. Lower, lower, stamp Satan lower. Lower, 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 lower. Lower, lower, stamp Satan lower. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Higher, 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 higher. Higher, higher, lift up Jesus higher. Lower, 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 lower. Lower, lower, stand Satan lower. Higher, 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 higher. Higher, higher, lift up Jesus higher. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. All right. Oh, I just want to show you this. Look at this. Look at this glass of water now. Just like Jesus cleanses us. That's what happened to David when he asked for forgiveness, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? That's great. Okay, back to this. Now we're going to do Simon Says. So everybody get up if you're not already up. And I'm going to start it. Okay, Simon Says, jump up and down. Simon says, turn around. Simon says, turn to your left. Simon says, turn to your right. Simon says, do a jumping jack. Simon says, touch your head. Simon says, rub your tummy. Simon says, touch your knees. Turn around. Did I get anybody? I bet I got somebody out there, but Will's pretty tough, isn't he? All right, Will, your turn. Uh, Simon says, touch your knees. Simon says, touch your toes. Simon says do a jumping jack. <laughs> Did you jump jacks? Oh, you got me. All right, keep going. Simon says turn to the left. Simon says turn to the right. Turn around. No, he didn't get me that time. Did he get you? All right, I'm going to do one more. All right, Simon says put a big happy face on your face. Simon says continue to be happy. Simon says, turn around. Simon says, turn around again. Simon says, turn around again. Turn to your left. Woo! I got dizzy on that one. Did I get anybody? All right. 
Okay, it is time for the balloon toss, where you need to keep the two balloons in the air. So, if you've got your balloons, we've got two balloons. We have different colors, so we'll know whose is whose. And I've got some different shapes this week, too. So I've got a green balloon and a kind of goldish brown balloon. Looks like an ice cream. It does. It does look like an ice cream cone. And Will has a red balloon and a pink balloon. So on the count of three, we're going to get started and see who can keep their balloons in the air the longest. So ready? One, two, three, go. Okay. Yes, I already dropped mine. All right. Will's going. Will's still going. He's still going. All right. Got your balloons in the air? Now uh, see if you can go farther than Will, because he's doing pretty good keeping them up in the air. Pretty good. All right. Wow. This is a long time. You're really keeping them up there. I'm impressed. Oh, I hope some of you out there are still going. Looks like Will could be doing this all day. Whoa, 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 whoa. Almost. Okay. Oh, nope. It hit the table. Uh, well, that was good. That was really good. Uh -oh. Okay, you better. You're gonna have to go, go carefully and get that. All right. I'll use one. You can't use one. Here, I want you to use one. No, it's, it's, out, it's out of the camera. Uh, I think somebody might help us with that balloon. Thank you. All right. Okay. okay ready? And there here we go. we go. We're gonna count to three and try again. One, two, three. Go. Can even can you keep one in the air. Oh, I'm gonna just try to keep one, so I can't do two. This, should, this shouldn't be a real sport. Yeah, a real sport. This is a real sport. Okay, let's see if I can keep one in the air as long as Will can keep two in the air. Let's just go with that. Oh, this is fun. Okay. Oh, I did it! I did it! Even though I only have one. Okay. Oh, there it is. Well, don't forget on it. Okay, all right, well, we are going to come say goodbye, and we sure had fun with you today. We always love doing the balloon toss. It's a fun one. And uh, I hope you're all doing good, and we miss you a lot. We love you, and uh, hey, email me. Send me something, a funny story, something that you did, a picture you drew, anything like that. I'd love to share that with, with all the other kids at South Hill Bible Church. So... We love you and take care. We'll see you again next week and uh, have a great week. Bye.